Hallelujah. He's good. All the time, he's good. Praise the Lord. Listen, let's pray. Father, we thank you today for all that you're doing. We come before you, Lord, thanking you, asking for anointing this morning. We'll be able to communicate your word, that you'll be able to release wisdom, divine understanding today, this morning, as we seek you, as we come before you boldly, as we set our ears and attention to hear and to receive what you have for us in Jesus' mighty name. Glory to God. We pray this morning. Amen and amen. Listen, I want you to put in the comments, your kingdom come, your kingdom come, your kingdom come, your kingdom come. This is what we're talking about. And our kind of theme for today is establishing the kingdom of God. And we're going to be reading Matthew chapter six, verse number nine through verse number 13. And let's jump to it. It says this, Jesus says, pray then in this way, our father who is in heaven, hallowed be your name, Your kingdom come, period. Your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our debts as we also have forgiven our debtors. And do not lead us into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For yours is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Hallelujah. Amen. This is our thematic thrust for uh, this particular lesson today. Hallelujah. The Lord is good. All right. So I want to kind of just talk to you very briefly. We're talking about establishing the kingdom, establishing the kingdom. And, and this is so critical um, because the kingdom of God is probably the most important. And I think the most significant um, thing that we have as the church um, is really what we are in, is what uh, the message of Jesus is the message of the kingdom of God. And so we want to kind of, you know, um, really rock with that. I believe that, you know, I believe that the kingdom of God is our inheritance. It is our right. And it is the greatest revelation, the greatest secret, the greatest truth, um, whereby God reveals everything. This is the message of Jesus Christ. It is the kingdom of God. The message. This is what he went about teaching and preaching everywhere. This is what he uh, authorized and ordained his apostles and even the disciples and all the dozens of other disciples and followers that he had even while he was alive on the earth um, before his resurrection from the dead. He commanded them to talk and to preach about the kingdom. The kingdom of God is the gospel. It is the message of the most high God. Glory to God. This is the message of Jesus. This is the official message of the church. And this is why we are so bent on, I want to say heaven bent, I almost said hell bent, but we haven't been on the kingdom of God. We're heaven bent on the ideas and the the truths and the realities of what the kingdom of God is because we recognize, my God, that it is the kingdom of God whereby we have the foundation for every promise of God. The kingdom of God is the system of God. It is the dimension, the realm whereby believers are born into and placed into. And from this realm, from this dimension, from this experience that we are now in, we exist, we live, move, and have our beings. It's the kingdom of God. And you've got to become addicted to the kingdom of God. Matthew chapter 6, verse 33, gives us uh, 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 an expectation and a great mystery for the addiction of the kingdom of God. It says this, but seek what? First, his kingdom and his righteousness. And all these things will be added to you. Glory to God. And so the idea is, is that as believers, we're not supposed to seek cars first. There's nothing wrong with it, but we're not supposed to seek it first. We're not supposed to seek money first. There's nothing wrong with it. We're not supposed to seek relationships and marriage, booze and bays and all kinds of stuff first, but we're supposed to seek the kingdom. There's nothing wrong with wanting it or desiring it, but our addiction, our obsession, our focus, your focus as a believer should be on the kingdom of God. Mm. Mm. This is what the Lord wants. This is what the Lord wants. This is what the Lord wants for us. Our addiction, our obsession to be the kingdom of God. Not your job, not your children, not your stuff, but the kingdom of God. And people, let me tell you, oh yeah, hallelujah. 
So let's have some fun. Can we have some fun this morning? I'm going to have some fun. I'm always having fun. <laughs> fun, fun, fun. I want to share with you kind of like what... Um, mm, I want to share with you what is the reality, my God, of the church in this particular day and age and why we are doing stuff the way that we are. It's because we're messed up. We're messed up. One of the things that I'm learning more and more is that particularly modern Christianity, modern American Christianity is toe up, as we would say, from the flow up. <laughs> toe up from the flow up, tore up, messed up, jacked up, wrecked, screwed up. One of the reasons is because all these myths that we are subjecting the church, myths, what do I mean myths? I mean, we talk about stuff that is... <laughs> you, ever, you ever go somewhere, put it like this. I know many of you are food connoisseurs. And, um, you know, I don't know if everybody's a snobbish, but in, in the quote-unquote black community, we get real protective and bougie about few things, and one of them being, you know, uh, the food that we eat. One of those dishes being macaroni and cheese. We, we, we have a thing. I, I don't know, you know, if other people feel the same way as black people do about macaroni and cheese. We bougie with it. Like, no, I, I, there's certain things that gotta be right or we just not gonna feel a way. You know, we, we need to have the macaroni and cheese. It's got to be smacking. I think it's got to be bussing is what we want. It's got to sound the right way. It's got to look the right way. It's got to have the right texture. Otherwise, we going to have problems. Am I, am, I, am I telling the truth? Let me know in the comments if I'm telling the truth or not, because I, I really believe this is true. Because we, we, will, we will abandon a restaurant if the macaroni and cheese ain't right. I know this is... This is real, but 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 here's what we do know is because you taste it and you're basing it off of what your your parents made. Maybe your father was the cook. Maybe you're basing it off of um, what your grandmother, grandparents made, or or maybe even at the church. Maybe the church you grew up in, they made, you know, there was some brother or sister who made amazing mac and cheese. And, and you like, yo, this is the standard. And everywhere you go, you are trying to recreate and embrace that standard. And when you get to the buffet spot and you see the noodles and it's just so watery, so liquidy. Come on, y'all. Don't, don't shout me down when I'm preaching. Good. The, you, you see it and you're like, this ain't it. You taste it and it's like, ooh, who, what are they doing here? <laughs> You know why? It's because we have we understand that something's missing and that something is not right. And as a result, the taste and the outcome of that dish is not what it's supposed to be. And in my quest to help us and to push us and to direct us into the eternal truths and the eternal realities of Jesus, I've recognized and I've looked at my life and things that I believe and things that I've done. And I, and I observe and I assess what happens in the world and culture and Christianity around me, what we hear preach, what is taught, what we do. And I recognize that this ain't the same macaroni and cheese that Jesus was, was talking about. It's not the same. It's not the same. It's not the same because it's, it don't taste the same. It don't look the same. The outcome is not the same. The Bible says the disciples went about laying hands, casting out devils, and healing the sick everywhere they went as they preached the kingdom of God. And I look at my life. Can I just be straight up with you? And I say, Lord, well, how come I, when I pray, the healings don't happen? How come when the church prays, the healings don't happen? How come we're not casting out devils in the same way? How come the church in many instances, at least our church, we still believe in it? 
We still believe that God heals the sick. Like when we pray, some churches, some Christians don't even believe that's possible. Jackie says more to the potato salad. You might be right. <laughs> some churches don't even believe that healing is possible. Some churches don't even believe that God casts out demons. Some people, some churches don't even believe in the baptism of the Holy Ghost with the evidence of speaking in tongues. We've made everything so basic and we've dumbed down Jesus and Christianity and we don't have the same dish that Jesus gave us. And what's up with that? What's up with that? Because somewhere the ingredients are jacked up. And I believe it's this is because primarily we've moved away and we've abandoned the teaching and the expression of the kingdom of God. You won't find another message that Jesus talks about other than the kingdom of God. You won't find it. You won't find it. Jesus, the message of the kingdom of God is the primary message that Jesus speaks and he shares with his disciples. It's the teaching of the kingdom of God the preaching of the kingdom of God. It is the primary way. And a matter of fact, Jesus tells us when we pray, before you pray for your house, before you pray for your new bay to come, that you've been meditating on, that you've wrote a list out. We've got lists. Let me tell you something. We want what we want. We want it. My God, we, we got vision board. We want, we want this in our lives. We want this kind of car. He got to look this way, this tall. She got to look this way, this curvaceous, this thick, et cetera, et cetera. We got all these things we want, but Jesus tells us to seek first the kingdom of God and his righteousness. But what we've done in the American church, modern Christianity is we've said, you know what? We don't even have to do that. We don't need to be obsessed with the kingdom of God. We want to be obsessed with what the kingdom can get us. But we don't want to be obsessed with the kingdom of God. And I call these things myths. M-Y-T-H-S. Myths. Myths that we embrace as a church that mess up the recipe for the mac and cheese. Metaphorically speaking. Myths. Myths that keep us from accessing the kingdom of God. Before I jump into the myths, I want to tell you, Jesus tells us when we pray, he's so serious about the kingdom of God. He says, first of all, when you pray, he says, first of all, you give honor to God. He says, our father who art in heaven, hallowed be your name. The first thing you always got to do is you got to give God props. First thing first, when you come in, come boldly into the throne of grace. You got to enter his gates with thanksgiving and to his courts with praise, which is why when, wherever we pray, we always going to do that. We always framing it with thanksgiving. We're always framing it with praise because we recognize that the model of prayer has to initiate and start with God's will, God's assignment, God's glory, God's goodness, his greatness as the father, our father in heaven, holy, different, uh, glorious, uh, uh, beyond, uh, uh, above all is your name. The second thing Jesus tells them to pray is your kingdom come. He didn't say, Lord, give me a house. Lord, give me money. Lord, heal my body. He prays your kingdom come. He didn't say, save my spouse. He didn't say, kick my suit, uh, <laughs> kick the person out who lives above me. He said, your kingdom come. He didn't say, give me a new job, Lord, give me a raise. He didn't say, Lord, cook me up with this beautiful black woman on Instagram who ignores my DMs over and over again. He said, no, pray this way, your kingdom come. Your kingdom come. Your kingdom come. And this is, of course, our theme for, for 20, 24 January of the month. And this is what we want to establish, that God's kingdom will come. Before you get hooked up, your kingdom come. Before you get your new spot, your kingdom come. Before anything in your life happens, God, your kingdom come, your will be done. I just wish you would just lift your hands and say, Lord, your kingdom come. Lord, your kingdom come. Lord, your kingdom come. Lord, your kingdom come. Lord, I don't, Lord, your kingdom come. I want to be obsessed with you. Your kingdom come. 
And we've messed this up so much that all these myths keep us from really walking in real kingdom. Myths, here's a, number, here's a myth that I hate, that, that somehow people tell you this is right, but this is so wrong because you will not find this in Bible. What do people say? Can I draw it? Yeah. <laughs> oh, you about to get drawn on. <laughs> you about to get drawn on in Jesus' name. Watch this. My God, watch this. Can I, Lord, help me out. Give me strength today. Give me strength in Jesus' name. All right. You about to get drawn on. Let me, I got to make one quick change because it's going to annoy the heck out of me. Bless God. All right. Bless him. All right. Myth number one. You ready for it? Can I, can I give this to you? Here is the myth. The myth is as follows. Um, I'm running out of time. My God, man, I hate this thing that it just, this timer starts and it don't stop. <laughs> Here is the myth. All right. You ready for it? Hold on. Let me get my pen right. There we go. Are we locked in? All right. We good. So here's the myth. The myth is this, is that what the order of life, God, spouse. Oh, I got to make this larger. Okay, Holy Ghost. Let me try it again. God, your spouse, your kids, job, and then your assignment. And of course, you can't read it. How many of y'all heard this? This order of life for the believer, God, spouse, kids, work, and then assignment, and then church. You ain't got a lie to kick it, Craig. Come on, tell me I'm telling the truth. I know I'm telling the truth. I have these arguments all the time with people. People say, this is the order, but I promise you this, this is not in the Bible. Like, oh no, Pastor, you can't, you can't do that. You can't. We gotta, we gotta, you know, God wouldn't want you to uh, ignore your spouse. God wouldn't want you to <laughs> ignore your kids so that you can, you can be focused on the church. God wouldn't want you to do that. God wouldn't want you to do that and, and to not focus on your job so that you can't pay for stuff and that you can't take care of your family. God wouldn't want you to do that. So it's God, your spouse, then kids, and then your job. And then it's your assignment. Then it's what God called you to do. Then it's your kingdom responsibility. But guess what? I got to tell you, this is not kingdom. This is a myth. Man, this is a myth. This is a myth. This is a myth. This is not what it means to seek first the kingdom of God. Let me help you out here. Like, oh, you saying that I should love, I, should, I can't, I can't, I gotta do God stuff more than my spouse. Yep. Exactly what I'm telling you. That's exactly what I'm telling you. See, that's why you ain't married no more, Pastor. That must be why you got divorced. It might be. <laughs> it might be. But guess what? I'm gonna be all right. I'm going to be all right. Watch what Jesus says. Watch what he says. Luke chapter 9, verse 23. Look what Jesus says. Jesus says this. If anyone wishes to come after me, he must first deny himself, take up his cross, and follow me. For whoever wishes to save his life will lose it. And for whoever loses his life for my sake, he is the one who will save it. For what is a man profited if he gains the world and loses or forfeits himself? Whoever was ashamed of me and of my words, the Son of Man will be ashamed of him when he comes in the glory of the Father and of all these holy angels. But I say to you, truthfully, there are those who stand here won't taste death until they see the kingdom. I don't know. Don't be mad at me, but I'm just telling you that, you know, it's a myth. It's a myth. Because why? God says, I'm the Lord. <laughs> Look at Matthew chapter 8, verse number 20 says. Watch this. Glory to God. Look at Matthew 8, verse 20. I want you to see what Jesus says. Watch this. Now, now watch what he says. He says, now when Jesus saw a crowd around him, he gave orders to depart to the other side of the sea. Then a scribe came and said to him, teacher, I will follow you wherever you go. <gasps> Jesus, I'm a Christian. Don't you see the necklace on 
me? This cross on me? Don't you see my membership at the church, Jesus? I go there twice a month. I give them whatever I can afford, whatever I think is right. <laughs> I'm a Christian. Jesus said this to him, the foxes have holes and the birds have airs, have, have, but the air birds that have nests, but the son of man has nowhere to lay his head. <laughs> Another disciple said to him, Lord, let me go first bury my father. I got a funeral. My dad, let me go first bury him. Jesus said, follow me and let the dead bury their own dead. Lord, have mercy. I don't want to have church today. We want the outcome of the kingdom, but we don't want the kingdom. There is nothing that comes before God. Nothing. Not your spouse, not your children, not your job, not your own livelihood. But this is a myth that we've interpreted and embraced in America because somehow somebody told you it don't take all that. God wouldn't require that, but God recognizes that if, you, if God is God, nothing comes before him. This is kingdom. This is kingdom. Jesus says, drop everything and follow me. He said, you have to die to yourself. You cannot be alive and exist in the kingdom of God. But you making time for your weekly spouse dates? doing all this and we can't go to church. This is not y'all. I'm talking about modern Christian because obviously you're here. So God bless you. But I'm just telling you, this is the mindset that we have. Oh, that's too much church. That's too much God. That's too much. Uh, my kids got to play sports. Uh-oh. My kids got to have a life. Uh-oh. Uh-oh. You wonder why Islam is one of the strongest in continuing to grow? Because they have a strict discipline. Now, of course, it's demonic. <laughs> Let's be straight up. But there is a strict commitment and devotion that they have. They recognize that they're building their world off of the off of what they believe to be their religious tenets and precepts. Everything has to go. The women got to dress a certain way. It's no complaining. They might complain, but it's, it's their religion. That's what they believe. Children got to be a certain way. There's so much devotion that they even, they, that the kids volunteer to serve God by often blowing themselves up, putting bombs on their backs. Man, that's crazy, right? And this is what they do for a fake God, for a demon, portraying them, himself as God. But here we are as Christians. On Sundays, we doing everything. We're not bringing our kids to church no more. We say, oh, and I hate these myths. Oh, because it sounds good. You know, I'm a Christian, but when my child gets a certain age to decide if they want to go to church, I'm going to let them decide if they want to go to church. What? Anyways, these are myths. These are things that mess up the recipe. Am I saying that God doesn't want you to love your spouse? No, because Jesus told us, husbands, love your wives as Christ loved the church. So the fact that a person would try to tell you that if you make God number one, and he's everything and you mean it, that you that would mean that you avoid your spouse and avoid your children, that's a lie from the devil. Jesus told the husbands to love your wives as Christ loved the church. But I can promise you this, that the reason why Jesus hung on the cross is not just because of his love for us, but because he was assignment and commissioned by the father. When he was praying blood, I'm telling you, he said, forget them. I, he said, listen, he was praying and sweat was blood was coming out of sweat. He was like, listen, Lord, you know, I, Lord, I don't want to do this. Let this cup pass from me. He said, you know what? <laughs> Forget your kids. <laughs> I'm not even thinking about them. The only thing that saved them, he said, Lord, if it be your will. It was his submission to God, 
His dedication to the kingdom of God was the reason why he continued with his glorious passion that saved all of humanity. This is the Bible. He didn't want to do it. He was having cold feet, as he should have, as a human being. Now, let me know Jesus was a real one. But what you will find and discover, though, is that his commitment to God, his commitment to the kingdom of God, and his obedience to God is what led him and made him stay on the cross. It wasn't because you and me. I'm sure that was in it, but that was very much secondary. It was because he said, Lord, your will, your kingdom come. And the question I have for us today is, how is your life built? Is your life, is your Christian life built on myths and Christian Christianisms that are wrong and contrary to the kingdom of God? Do you understand the very first commandment that God gives? He says, I'm the Lord. You should have no other God before me. Nothing comes before God, but we think because you say God is first, but you put your kids and your wife and your job and your comforts beneath it, and then your assignment and then church, you think that's dope. You think that means God is first? Please prove it to me. Well, because he, he gave me, he gave me the spouse. Okay. Okay. Did he? Okay. <laughs> These are myths, people, and it ruins the recipe. And you cannot establish the kingdom of God in your life if your life is built on myths. Boy, I want to preach for two hours, but I'm not. Trust me, I got you tonight, but I, I this morning. But I feel I want to. I have so much I want to share with you about this because these myths are ruining us. These myths are destroying our faith, destroying our ability to access the kingdom of God. Jesus says to seek first the kingdom of God and his righteousness. And he says, and then everything you need will be added to you. Do you mean, do you recognize that if you had a, de a dedicated, devout commitment to God and says, God, you are everything. My life is committed to you, that God will add to you everything that your hearts desire. Psalm 37, delight yourself in the Lord. And what is he going to do? He will give you then the desires of your heart. I'm telling you this because God has massive miracles for you, massive blessing and supernatural encounter that is waiting for you. The breakthrough that you need for your family is waiting for you. The healing that you need is waiting for you. The ministry that you've been longing for, the impact that you've been longing for, it is waiting for you. But what we've got to do is we've got to get a mindset that says, Lord, your kingdom come for real. Not in the churchy way, not in the religious way, not in the way that looks good on Sunday morning where we can say, high five your neighbor, say, your kingdom come, your kingdom come, woo, your kingdom come. And then we build our lives in a way that doesn't reflect that. I'm telling you this today because God wants to raise you up, this church, this people. We have an assignment to be raised up above all the nations of the earth. The church of Jesus Christ is meant to be high above all the nations, to be the, the glory, the, 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 the esteem of the world, the light of the world, a city on a hill. But you can't be a city on a hill if you are building your life off of what the world is building their life on. And the problem is, the challenge is, is that you're not even a man. You're doing what you think is right. We, we are experts on morality by definition. We're experts on not lying, not stealing, not cheating, not committing sexual perversion and morality. We're experts on that. We know that. At least we know it. We might not, we might not all do it, <laughs> but we know it. <laughs> but when it comes to building our lives on what will make a difference, a real significant impact, we are ignorant. And so we have to make sure that we establish, Lord, your kingdom come. I bet if you look at your life, you would be surprised at how many myths. Christian myths. We're built now. Again, love your wife, husband. Love and honor your husband's wives. Take care of your kids, absolutely. But should we sacrifice what God requires for our children? 
what God wants for our children? There's so many people that I know that never do the assignment that God has given them because they're, it's like, well, I got to first let my kids graduate and then I can do it. Once me and the spouse, we get this together, then I'll do it. Got to graduate first so I can get this promotional job. Then I'll do what God has called me to do. But the mindset is your kingdom come. Your kingdom come. His kingdom come. His will be done on earth as it is in heaven, in my life. Let me tell you something. When a kingdom invades, when the kingdom of God comes, it is not coming to integrate with your life. I need you to hear me very clearly. The kingdom of God is not coming to integrate and to commingle with your life. What do I mean? Let's think back to the civil rights movement era. Let's think back to 58 Plessy versus Ferguson. Let's think back to Brown, excuse me, versus the Board of Education. Let's think back to when schools were integrated, where the federal government determined that indeed separate but equal is unconstitutional. In terms of education, um, and that they have to allow integration of schools. And then think about integration. Think about integration. Other places, Other places please, mute. please mute. Hallelujah. Um. Where was that? Um, what we wanted to do, what the, the just cause was to take people of color and to allow them to be commingled, integrate, to go into the school systems of quote unquote white American, not quote unquote white Americans, exactly white Americans. And because what the experience was, was that due to racism, segregation, and un, unjust systems and, 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 and laws that um, black people, are, black Americans, our education, our experiences, uh, housing, etc., was inferior because we were denied certain rights, certain things that were deserving. And so, therefore, because education should be provided by the state for all people, we should be able to, public education, we should be able to experience the same quality. Now, here's what I'm saying. We wanted to go in. The black Americans said we should be able to experience it. So in New York, I know maybe, I think in the 70s, uh, the busing um, happened. It was a thing that some people had to go to school miles and miles away due to this so that they could experience a quality of better education they might have than they would have experienced naturally. Now, here's what's interesting, though, is that we think this is what the kingdom of God is. We think it's where we integrate God's stuff with our life. We, where we come in, we say, okay, well, here's what God says, and let me see how I can sprinkle this into my life. Let me see how I can try to fit God into my world, how I can fit God into what I'm doing, my plans, my goals, and my dreams. You want God to be the hot sauce on your fish sandwich. Y'all know I'm hungry because we about to go into this fast. All I'm thinking about is food. Pastor talking about uh, macaroni and cheese, hot sauce, catfish, because all this stuff, right? <laughs> but but I need you to see this. We want God to be the upgrade, the secret sauce to our life, but that's really not what it is. The kingdom of God is not coming to integrate into your life. The kingdom of God comes and to remove everything about your life to establish the dominion and the authority of God in your life. He says, God don't care about your dreams. Can I just keep it real with you? God does not care about your dreams. God does not say, you know what? I would say this to you, but you got dreams. So therefore, there it is. This sounds very harsh, but it's a reality. It's a truth that we need to embrace. 
God don't care about, you know, what your circumstances in the sense of that you won't, that you won't be able to, um, to, to accommodate what his word says. If he says you shouldn't steal, does God say, well, you know, I know you've, you're, you're a woman and you don't get paid the same. You're a minority. You live in the slums. Life is hard. So go ahead and steal. Does he do that? Nope. He don't care because his word is his word. He don't care how poor you are. You shouldn't steal. <laughs> he don't care. But what do we think? We think we make these excuses. Well, God don't know. God know my heart. He knows your heart. Your heart is jacked up. Your heart is wicked. It's deceitful. Your heart is not converted. Your mind is not converted, which is why Romans 12, 2 says, don't be conformed to this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind. Come on, let's just keep real. Have we not all done that? I've done it. So I'm not even just saying like, oh, I'm the preacher and I've never done it. I'm saying I've done this. I'm guilty of this. So I know you are. Uh-oh. You got your you got your love thing. Oh, nothing comes before nothing becomes before our sexual desires in America. I, why do I always start the first of the year with really hard men? I don't know, but it's the truth. Nothing comes before our sexual desires in America. Am I right? Let me tell you, you you we we will make every excuse and every reason to stay in some mess. That we know God is not again, not for, because why? We want to integrate the kingdom of God in our lives instead of allowing his kingdom to come fully and his will to be done. But God, you know, I love her. God, you know, I love him. We've been together for 20 years. <laughs> We got kids together, God. I was born this way, God. We make all these excuses for our stuff so that we can try to integrate the kingdom into life. And we wonder why we can't get the results. This nation is led by its reproductive systems. I'll tell you what. My God, we are so driven by sex, by our sexual desires. You can't even sell nothing in America without making it sexy. You can't go to a movie without it being sexy. You can't eat food without it having to be sold in a sexy way because this is how we're driven. Because we are abnormally, we are overly sexual. We are driven by our sexual desires. And it's no different in the church. And so we've got a sexualized church where we can't even, where we, we, we say, well, God knows my heart. So this is where I'm going to stay and what I'm in. And yet we are trying to get kingdom outcomes. How's this going to work? Matter of fact, that, but the problem, and here's the problem that I have. Listen, we love everybody. We don't bash people. We bash heterosexuals in the same way that we bash homosexuals. Praise God. So everybody can get it in this church. But you know what, what, what just confounds me about the argument that I read and I see from those who, are, uh, who love God but may, are, are same-sex loving is that they'll say, like, well, I'm born this way. So God, you got to understand. I know your word says X, Y, and Z, but I'm born this way. So, God, you got to work with me. And God is like, who the absolute do you think you are? And I'm with God saying, yeah. Because you know why I'm mad? Because I can't, I'm heterosexual and I'm single and I'm born attracted to women. I'm saved attracted to women. Matter of fact, when I was married, still attracted to women faithful but still attracted to women watch and 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 guess what i cannot <laughs> just be like hey i was born this way 
and everybody got accepted. But the people in this community, they feel like they get a pass from God because it's different. No, everybody's got to bow down. Everybody's got to humble themselves, follow God, take up their cross and die to themselves because we have to establish the kingdom in our life. Here's what I'm telling you. I'm not ranting. I'm telling you these are myths that we have that will jack you up. My God, man, y'all not special. <laughs> There's no special class in the kingdom because your sin is different. You still got to be holy just like me. <laughs> what in the world is this? Myths. You shacking up. Why? Why? Cohabiting. Why? Why? Oh, well, God. Why? What are we doing? What are we doing? What are we doing? Do you love God or not? Here's the point. Everybody has to deny themselves. If you want to first establish the kingdom of God, you have to first deny yourself. You want kingdom outcomes? Deny yourself. You want the supernatural and the miracle? You want to be lifted up high above all the nations of the earth? Deny yourself. But I got dreams. I was working on this. Deny yourself. Uh, uh, but, 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 you know, I, I love what I got going on. Deny yourself. Let me tell you why we can't deny ourselves. Because we believe what we have is greater than what God has for us. We don't see the kingdom. We see religiosity. We don't see that God's plans for us are far better than anything we could ever do for us. We don't recognize that when we deny ourselves, when we walk in sexual purity, when we walk in holiness, when we do not cohabitate and we not share, when we don't get drunk, when we don't steal, when we don't lie, when we don't commit adultery and fornication, when we don't get drunk, when we don't abuse drugs, when we, when we commit and submit our will and our future to God, we don't realize that what God has for us is infinitely better. It's eternal. The Bible says the blessings of the Lord maketh rich and he addeth no sorrow to it. See, when God blesses you, it won't come with headaches. Maybe our marriages suck because we're not establishing the kingdom first. Maybe if we first sought God, I mean, everybody wholeheartedly. You know why it's impossible? Let me tell you something. Adam and Eve, before they sinned, I believe they had the best marriage. But it was when they began to make room for the devil that everything in their marriage began to crumble from that place forward. But until, while they were walking in unity with God, I believe they probably had the strongest relationship. They probably had no arguments. Everything was eye to eye. I don't care what anybody is. Marriage is hard. Mm, I don't know. Jesus says, take my yoke upon you. My yoke is in learn of me. My yoke is easy and my burden is light. There's nothing that is hard in the kingdom of God. Nothing. Nothing that is hard. Maybe it's hard because you're trying to do a spiritual thing in the flesh. Well, this is my, this is my house, woman. And it is, brother. God bless you, though. You know, this is a man's church. We stand on that, praise God. We're going we gonna to pump the brothers up. Maybe it's still house. I don't know. It's y'all's house. Okay, it's both of y'all's house. Jesus is Lord. Y'all going to get mad at me. But the point is, I'm saying, though, is that, yeah, but, but why are you out here? The Bible says submit to one another. You don't got to raise your voice. You don't got to try to dominate and, and berate and belittle a woman to be a man. Women, you can submit. <laughs> he don't know I feel. He don't know. He think he can tell me what to do. He don't know. what. It, so what? Let, what if he does? I'm just saying, we're trying to do spiritual things. Marriage is spiritual. In the flesh. And think about it. If we were to be submitted to God, 100%, if his kingdom would come in our marriage, what attitudes would leave? Who's right to be right would leave? All right, myths. And these myths ruin our relationships, ruin our marriage, ruin our lives. This is one of the reasons why Christianity, Christians have the worst marriages in the world. In terms of, in America, 
the divorce rate in the church is a, it, ridiculous. Oh, because maybe because we're not kingdom. We churchy, but we're not kingdom. Do you know that God's kingdom has solutions for everything being sweet and peaceful? Sweet and peaceful. Why are we fighting? Why are we pitting people? You sleep on the couch today. I don't, I don't know. Like what? Why are we doing this? Arguing? All this stuff. Why are we Christians and we can't have friends? Why are Christians sometimes the worst friends? Can't keep your mouth shut? Can't keep somebody else's name out your mouth? Gossiping? Slandering? Maybe because the kingdom is not coming. Because we're trying to integrate it. What I want us to do... Man, I don't mean to beat you up today, but I want to shift your thinking and help you see that the first step in establishing the preeminence that God has for you and me as believers is to ensuring that his kingdom comes completely and fully in your life. Here is something. I have two major points I want to get to you. I have five minutes and 50 seconds. Point number one, I think, point number one, there we go, is this, is that preaching of the gospel brings you into the kingdom of God. It's from the preaching of the gospel, coming to church, hearing the word of God from anointed men and women of God that brings you into the kingdom, that causes the kingdom of God, causes you to be birthed into the kingdom. Jesus told Nicodemus in John 3, he says, listen, Nicodemus, you must be born again. Unless you're born again, you will not be able to see the kingdom of God. So when you get born again, when you get saved from preaching, from hearing the gospel, that brings you into the kingdom. But it is your spirit-filled faith life that will cause the kingdom of God to be brought into your world. Hear me very closely. It is your spirit-filled faith walk that will allow the kingdom of God and its fruit to be manifested in your world. Meaning this, you can be in the kingdom and never experience results. You can be in the kingdom and remain sick, remain poor, remain confused, remain bound and limited to all the stuff that's happening in the world to all the effects of sin and death and still be in the kingdom. You can be in the kingdom and still struggle beyond where you should, the way you should. Because why? Just because you're in the kingdom of God does not guarantee results and effort. You say, that don't make sense. Well, think about it. Just because you exist. <laughs> doesn't mean that you're automatically going to be rich, have success, have a place to live. Don't you have to work? Don't you have to do things in your existence? You could be in America, the greatest country. We got people by the millions illegally entering into our country. And I'm kind of disappointed how, you know, this is happening. And you see it. We feel it here in the city illegally like what's up with that but we got people millions of people coming into an america unlawfully because they recognize america at least as they think is the place to be i'm not against immigration we got people who come from from other countries here on, on our church so we're not against that we celebrate that we celebrate the lawful Action of everything. Anything that's lawful, do it. Praise God. What I'm trying to tell you is that people come to America because they recognize it's the place of opportunity. And here we are. We exist in America. But just because we exist, we know that it don't mean you're going to be successful. You got to go and work. You got to hustle. You got to go do things. Because just being in a kingdom, a government, does not guarantee that you will have the possibilities of that government. And I would dare say it's the same way in the kingdom of God, if not more. That's why the Bible says in Philippians chapter 2, verse 12, is that you have to work out your salvation 
with fear and trembling. The kingdom is in you, but you have to work it out. Healing is in you, but you have to work it out. Not in a sense of earning it, but by using your faith and the strength and the resources that God has given you to establish the kingdom of God in your life. The things you need for your divine marriage, you got to work it out. Things you need for your children, raising our children in the fear and admission of the Lord, we've got to work it out. Guess what? For you to get your next million, your first million, you've got, it's in you, but you've got to work it out. So preaching of the gospel brings me into the kingdom, but it is my spirit-filled, faith-based living that causes the kingdom to be manifested in my world. Man, we got to make room. We got to make room. Make room for the kingdom. I dare you. I know you got resolutions. I know you got goals. You got your membership to the gym. So I'm going to eat right this year. Ooh, I'm going to work out. I'm going to start that business. I'm going back to school. Ooh, I know you do, but I want you to make room for Jesus. Uh, here's what I need you to do. This church, what we have to do and what I've been on a journey to do is to restart and to say everything that's not kingdom, we got to get it out the way. Everything that's a myth, we got to get it out the way. Here's what I'm saying to you. Look in your life. What's kingdom? What's not? If you want the blessings of God, if you want to be Jesus, the Bible tells us that. Oh, 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 oh. I hate when this happens. <laughs> Proverbs chapter, I'm sorry, Isaiah 48, 17 says the Lord will lead us in a way that we should go and that the Lord himself, he will teach us how to profit. If you want that, if you want that, if you want that, and I know you do, you got to make room. Notice this, that God could not deliver the Israelites to their promised land until they got all of Egypt and unbelief out of their system. Because it's not compatible. I dare you to give God a blank slate. Anything that you know 100% that you're not sure 100% is God, I just dare you to say this year, Lord, you know what I'm going to do? I'm gonna just going to set it to the side. Say, Lord, you know what? I'm going to put it over there. And I'm going to just, Lord, say, your kingdom come. Do you know that God will lead you in the way you should go? My time is up. God has the best plans for you. See, it's the devil who tries to trick us and to make us think that, oh, God does it for me. It's going to be lame. It's going to be whack. It's going to be so boring. Not really. The devil does that to keep you trapped in your own efforts, your own strength. But we're seeing this year, we're moving everything, everything, every idol, every relationship in your life. See, what you got to do is you got to have the courage. Dare I say, excuse my coarseness, the balls. To say, I've got to establish the kingdom first in my home. How can you have a divine household if you can't? Let God rule. Oh, this is your year. This year we're going to higher ground. But we got to build on the foundation. The Bible says that foundation is Christ. I'm not talking about religiosity. I'm not talking about having a cross, a tattoo that says Jesus. I'm saying, what does your life show? What is your prayer life like? This is why we fast every Wednesday. Kingdom come. Where's my strengths? <laughs> Y'all tired of me. I know. I love you. I really do. Some of us are satisfied with being good people. 
That's not it. It's not enough. I'm nice. That's not enough. Let me give you in 20 seconds the next dimension of this. Beyond just the, the scope of it, then we begin to apply his wisdom. Joy is a principle that has to override your life. Forgiveness is one. Taking no offense. Being wronged. And saying, all right, it don't matter. I'm still in joy. I don't have to be right. <laughs> I don't have to have the last say. This is kingdom living. Not living by your emotions, but living by faith. This is next level stuff. And I guarantee you this, that as you begin to build your life with the kingdom dimension, with kingdom perspective, where everything is subject to God, everything is surrendered to God. I guarantee you that your situation will change. The Bible says that his word is a balm to us. It's medicine to us. I guarantee you this, that some of us are dealing with anxiety and tension and things in our heart and minds. I guarantee you this, that as you follow God, is this, this is why our model is that. <laughs> then we'll live as kings. As you follow God, he, I believe healing, strength, tension, and stress in your body will break as you get yourself in alignment. I believe that for you today. I'm telling you, we're going to see such a wave of healing, of freedom, depression, all this stuff. How are you a Christian and you got long-term depression? Oh, it's mental health. Another myth. The Bible says he will keep those in perfect peace whose mind is stayed on him. The Bible says the peace of God will guard your heart and mind. I'm not against therapists, but I'm telling you, the wisdom of God, the strength of God is better. Either you believe God or not. Are you saying that we shouldn't go to therapy? Are you saying that people don't get depressed? I'm saying you shouldn't stay depressed. That is a demonic inspired affliction. You can't look in the Bible and say the way that we are, I'm not gonna stop, the way that we have surrendered to this false God of mental health, mental health. What? I'm telling you this, my mother, clinically depressed schizophrenic so don't nobody tell me like oh you don't understand like i lived as a i lived in it i wanted there was a time i contemplated suicide in high school because my life was so hard because of what my mother had to experience so i don't i'm i don't care been depressed been dealt with it came here last year 2022 Probably for three months, internally depressed. Didn't even know how to preach when we left our building. Don't tell me that. But I do know that the joy of the Lord is our strength. See, myths and lies that will cause you to miss the kingdom of God. You're either in the world or you're not. I'm not shaming you if you're depressed now. Or if you're struggling. I'm saying, what is the kingdom saying? Are you in the kingdom or not? Your kingdom come. Let's pray. Father, in Jesus' name, thank you so much for today. Wow. Wow, wow, wow. Thank you for the building blocks of our future, of destiny and purpose. Thank you, God, that your word is true and you are true and every man is a lie. We're not going to be a compromised church. We're going to be a church that's built on the kingdom. We're going to be a church that's built on your will, built on your goodness, your truth. And thank you that healing will break forth. Thank you that provision and blessing is breaking forth even now 
as we shift and as we repent. Thank you, Lord. I pray, God, that every heart listening today would examine themselves to see whether they are in the faith, not just saved, but whether or not we are walking in kingdom, truth, and light all around. All around. Father, every myth that is in our life, please expose it. Everything that we think is kingdom, but it's not, please expose it. Every mindset, mentality that we've adopted that is hindrance and contrary to your kingdom, Lord, please expose it. Reveal it to us. We want your kingdom. We deny ourselves. We want you. In Jesus' name, amen, amen. Listen, we're getting ready to jump in the after party. I, I wanna hear from you. I said a lot today, all of our members and family. Listen, I want you to jump on the Zoom. I wanna talk to you. Listen, if you're on Zoom, please do not click off. I wanna talk to you. We, I said some things today. I'm sure you might have thoughts, questions, concerns. Let's talk about it just for a little bit. My God, where we're going, it's not gonna be by power or might where God has taken us, the way that we're gonna is dominate this city with the gospel of the kingdom, we can't do it by man's wisdom. The way that God is gonna raise you up, you cannot do it by man's wisdom. You cannot do it by natural wisdom. But this is their time for the kingdom to be established. Oh God, some of us are in roles, I'm prophesying now, some of us are in roles where God has said you are not supposed to be. I'm talking about you're living at a life a level where God says, I've called you way higher. But because you are conflicted and compromised, your life is hindered. The blessings that are meant for you will never reach you. Mm. But I, I know kings are rising. I say that gender inclusive, gender neutral, kings are rising. That's why I'm preaching this to you. I'm not trying to beat you up to beat you down. I'm trying to do this to, to help build you up, to help you see what God has for you. It's so brilliant that if you would surrender to it, my God, the way the light and the glory of God would shine in your life, the things that you've been dreamed of, delight yourself in the Lord and he will give you desires. It's coming to you. Father, I pray for strength to rebuild. I pray for strength to rebuild. I pray for strength to rebuild. You don't, let me tell you something. You need no one in your life more than you need God. And anything in your life that would seem as if you need it more than God is a plant from the devil. Listen to what I'm telling you right now. Anything or any person in your life that would try to pose as if you need that more than God is a plant from the devil. This is the year you rise into higher ground. This is the year where God will literally cause shackles and demonic harassment and oppression that has been following you to break in Jesus' name. Because when the kingdom comes, it does not come to integrate, it comes to completely dominate in Jesus' name. If you're not saved right now, if you're not born again, you need to get born again. You need to get born again. What are you doing? If you're not born again, if you're not saved, if you don't know Jesus as Lord and Savior of your life, what are you doing? Today is your day. Jesus loves you. He has come so that you can have life and have it more abundantly. The only way that you can experience the manifold blessings of God. Let me tell you something. Oh, we, you don't know that God brought you here today so that you can get your life right. And so that he can bring you into a level of blessing, of healing, of prosperity, of peace, of joy, of purpose, and long-term legacy that you've never known before. That's only possible in Christ. I don't care how smart you are. I don't care what college you went to. It's only possible in the kingdom of God. The way, whatever the Lord does, he does it forever. My God. What you need to do is receive Jesus. He is the key. Jesus is the way. What you have to do is surrender your life to Jesus, everything to your life to Jesus. We surrender it to the Lord. Bless him. Hallelujah. 
Glory to God. Listen, if you want to be born again, if you want to be saved, if you want to have real relationship with God so that you know for sure, number one, that when you die, that you won't go to hell and burn for eternity, but you'll live with God and Jesus forever and eternity. You want to make sure that the blessings of the Lord can overtake your life right now. I want you to pray this prayer with me. Say, Lord Jesus, I surrender my life to you today. I confess you are the son of God and my Lord forever. Forgive me for my sins. Wash me with your blood. I believe you died for me and that you were raised from the dead on the third day with all authority in heaven and earth that I might be justified. Right now, I believe that my sins are forgiven. I am justified by your blood. I am born again. I am saved. I am a child of God. I am free from the power of sin to serve the living God. Thank you, Jesus, for receiving me. Thank you, Jesus, for restoring me. Thank you, Jesus, for saving me. Listen, my friend, if you prayed that prayer and you meant it, meant it from your heart, I'm telling you right now, something supernatural and divine is occurring to you. I don't care if you were already walking with God and you fell away. If you prayed that prayer and you meant it from your heart, today God is birthing you anew. Bible calls this being born again, that the Holy Spirit is regenerating your spirit and the seed of God, the word of God is being implanted into your heart. And you are now identified not as whatever you were before, a sinner, an adulterer, a liar, a thief, a cheat. You are now identified as a child of God. What I need you to do right now is to scan or screenshot this QR code and follow the prompt so that you can input the text message and fill out the form so that we can connect with you. I want to help walk with you on your journey of salvation. Or you can simply text the word Jesus to the number 929-209-2377. Praise God. Do that right now. Do that right now. If you're watching today and you don't have a church home, listen, you need a church home. There's another myth that you can be a Christian without being in a church, having a pastor. You need a pastor. You need a pastor. You need a pastor. You need a pastor. It's what God has established. This is a a tool for your spiritual life. You need a church family. You don't just need a pastor, but you need a church community, a covenant community to help walk with you. And also that you can help pour into. If you don't have a church home and you're watching right now, listen, I want to be your pastor. I would almost play Roger Trout and say, I want to be your shepherd. I want to be your shepherd. (laughs) Hallelujah. We crazy here, but it's all good. We love the Lord. What you want to do is scan the QR code here. It's a different one. Or you can text the word church to the number (laughs) 929-209-2377. Amen. We'd love to receive you. Listen, when you do that, you're going to fill out a form and it will get your contact information and we'll follow up with you and welcome you and get you started in the kingdom of God. Praise God.